Saka. This is eLife Reflections. Hello and welcome to another time of devotional studies. Today, we will be considering the topic, Don't set aside the grace of God. And our scripture is taken from Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I read from the NIV. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Amen. In the verses above, Paul identified himself with the death and resurrection of Christ, with the statement, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me suggesting that he had relinquished his personal interests and ambitions to Christ who lived in him. He argued that if righteousness could come by keeping the Jewish law, then Christ died for nothing. But knowing that he lived by faith in the work of Christ on the cross, Paul stressed that he will not nullify the grace of God or treat Christ's death as meaningless. Beloved, like Paul, let us not set aside the grace of God by the way we live. Amen. Beloved, I would have us to review the scripture we have just read by answering the following. How did Paul describe the old life he lived before? Reference verse 28. How did Paul describe the new life he lived in Christ? Reference verse 20b. How did Paul express his attitude towards the grace of God that brought him salvation? Reference verse 21a. And finally, what was Paul's argument concerning the observance of the Jewish law and salvation? You can find that in verse 21b. There are some truths in the scripture above that cannot be ignored. And so, let's do a recap. 1. Paul said his old self had been crucified with Christ and he no longer lived. Number 2. Paul said Christ lived in him and the life he lived he lived by faith in Christ who loved him. Number three, Paul's attitude was to ensure that he did not set aside the grace of God. And finally, Paul argued that if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Wow. How do we respond to this powerful message? In response to the above and by application, how best can we appreciate the grace we have received and not downplay it? Beloved, derived from the acronym GRACE, here are ways to make God's grace effective in our lives. Letter G, in the acronym GRACE, we must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus so that we don't go astray. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. I read from the message translation. But you, friends, are well warned. Be on guard, lest you lose your footing and get swept off your feet by these lawless and loose-talking teachers. Grow in grace and understanding of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. Letter R, in the acronym GRACE, we must recognize the grace of God as the basis of who we are. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10a. Paul said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. Letter A, in the acronym GRACE, we must appreciate and praise God for the grace he has poured out on us. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. Let us see in the acronym GRACE, we must come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace in our time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. It reads, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And finally, letter E in the acronym GRACE. We must embrace the grace that gives us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Titus chapter 3 verse 7. It reads, Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Amen. Remember, God's grace is great. God's grace is rich. God's grace is abundant. God's grace is complete. And God's grace is extraordinary. Well, I just felt grace. It's great, rich, abundant, complete, and extraordinary. The Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Child of God, we are saved by grace through faith. Therefore, don't set aside the grace of God, neither take it for granted. We are who we are because of God's grace. Amen. In conclusion, what have we said? In order not to downplay God's grace, we must appreciate grace. And that is, we must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. We must recognize the grace of God as the basis of who we are. Appreciate and praise God for the grace he has poured on us. Come to his throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And finally, embrace the grace that gives us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Shall we pray? Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and our Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us unfailing courage and firm hope, encourage us and strengthen us to always do and say what is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Wow, this is all the time would allow us to share today. Until I come your way again, remember to make time to study these scriptures all over again. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will throw more light on his word for our growth. I love you. And remember, Jesus is coming soon. God bless you. <laughs>